What's up, y'all? Rich Slayton here today with a really fun video. You can see him on the screen. One of the all-time greats, my personal favorite player. CRL veteran for every single CRL that's ever happened all the time. Morton. Uh, dude, thanks for coming on today. I'm so excited to, for the viewers to get a chance to kind of dive into your mind on what you've chosen as your three biggest, best games of your CRL career. I'm so excited to, uh, to be here, and it will be a really, really cool video. I'm sure about that. Well, let's not waste any time. Let's get right into it. We have three games that you picked, and I'm curious about kind of why you picked these games, about what you're feeling while you're playing them. But let's go way, way back to 2019 to the CRL Western Championships. Here we are. It's you versus Diego, and this was the first of the three ones that you sent me. And first of all, this is, people don't realize, this is you playing to beat Diego to win the CRL Western Championship. You'd kind of been right up to the precipice a couple of times. And this was game number two, and you came out with this really interesting, like, minor Dark Goblin cycle deck. Do you remember why that was the choice here? I remember exactly why it was a choice, because he won that, like, the game before me, uh, before the game. Like, I think in the first match, it was, like, me playing a Mega Knight deck, and he was, like, playing my deck. And I was, like, actually, like, really liking his deck, but I was, like, I'm not really too sure if it's that good in the meta. But, like, after, like, being ahead 1-0 and also see him using his deck, I was, like, feeling really comfortable about that. So he comes out. We've got Fish Boy. And this is, again, this is so fun to think about this. This was the be the first year that Fisherman was around, totally changed the game dramatically. And you're, of course, known for really fast cycle stuff. This is also the beginning, people forget, of two Elixir wall breakers. They were three Elixir all the way through the end of the spring split this time around. How fast did it take you to figure out that you loved wall breakers? Honestly, I just love cheap cycle decks. It was like a lock bait main before, and I was like, I think wall breaker, they're really similar to lock bait, so I just felt like picking them up and it worked really well. And also at the same time, there was like the, Mitch, the witch meta, where witch did like crazy DPS, yeah. and was just like a buff musketeer. Yeah, so you see the witch, of course, on Diego's side. This is, uh, I think, MK Sparky. He's running in this one, yes, is that right? Yeah, MK Sparky. So. Here you are, we've reached kind of the first two minutes of gameplay, you've gotten some chip damage, you know what he's running pretty solidly by this point. How are you feeling at this stage in this game? So I actually didn't know that he had MK, I wasn't really sure, I was like maybe giant, maybe goblin giant. Um, but I felt like pretty, pretty good about that because I knew he didn't have like a lock, so Dark Golden gets a ton of all even as poison and I also knew like I can just put a ton of pressure in. He always has to defend, he always has to overcommit and this is exactly what the deck does. I think my last card was Bomb Tower. Um, but yeah, just like pressure was like crazy. Just like just spam every single time I can. Yeah, because I, mean, I knew like it would be really tough to defend like a big push and here's his first MK. <laughs> and yeah, this is this was you can see all the pressure on the left hand side getting a ton of value out of the minor in that one, the bats and the ice golem. And you know, for, everyone knows I love ice golem, so this is wonderful for me to see little snowman back in business. So as we go into double elixir and now into sudden death overtime, what are you thinking about as your priorities? Is it just pressure, pressure, pressure from this point until the end? Or are you starting to adjust because you're now getting into the time when his heavy deck begins to shine? So, like, of course, like, continue to opposite line pressure. I can't really, like, afford to push same lane. I just always, like, want to false out, like, something. Like, bats, e -whiz, Because I know, like, if he gets, like, his big sparky magnet push with an e behind, I would just immediately lose. And this is, like, what I'm trying to do. But I know it will be tough at one point when he gets, like, a big push. So... I knew I need really good defenses, even I'm applying pressure. But like Ice Golem, Dark Golem does such a great job there. I mean, I love Ice Golem. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I see it's a great... Was was that a, a priority here for you? Was separating the, the MK away from the Sparky as much as possible? Yeah, because I know like my bats will get a ton of fire, especially because the, the witch back then did like single target damage. So she wasn't that effective against bats. And I knew like if, if every time I'm able to kite like all the troops on one point, I can just go bats it off to Sparky and he has like struggles to kill my bats, yeah, and just like, even I got like more damage on the left side, it's really important for me to keep up the opposite lane pressure. So, you get a huge Whoa. connection, yeah, that big, <laughs> that big wall breaker connection. At this point, do you know, pretty much know you have this 1-1, or is this push on the left hand side making you nervous? I was like, this has to be, this is the last push. If I'm able to defend, it should be fine, but Bomb Tower, like Skellens, like, man, like, these cards were so good back then. <laughs> <laughs> Dual lane pressure, minor bats, yeah. left hand side, wall breakers, and he has to yeah. e-whiz. He's really, really thirsty. And here we go. Bats get on there. The good game. And this, you see the little look there. This was the CRL Western Championship. This was you and SK Gaming. You know, after 2018, where you had a good, good group of guys with you, 
but not really the team built. And then you guys spent two seasons building what was really what is the team people think of when they think of SK Gaming is U4. Uh, talk to me about what this moment felt like. Oh, that was really, really good because we had a ton of pressure after like losing the, the spring season to Liquid and like losing the season before like against Kes in the finals. So we really had to win this, especially like because I think there was like a season where you like lost like one game and like the last one, everything else, we just like won and every one of us was performing well. I think everybody had like at least one sweep. So we were like so dominant. So it was like about also finishing that. But I think we got pretty like pretty like, I wouldn't say lucky, but Liquid was like, I think they had to play against Kazu before, like securing yeah. the world spot. And they were like, I also, yeah, Diego was mentioned afterwards, they were really tired and I think that really helped us there, but still we had to do that. Well, of course, you guys weren't done facing Team Liquid. That was the championship <laughs> game. And your second pick is, I mean, everyone, everyone knows that maybe the greatest match in the history of Clash Royale League, history of Clash Royale is... SK Gaming, Team Liquid, semifinals at Worlds in 2019. Would most people consider that to be the actual world final? No offense to the eventual runners-up on the other side of the bracket. And yeah. you picked a really fun match, and I, I have so many questions about this one. Let's go ahead and get into it, because you picked this Golem game against Canario, who, take a look at the score on the left-hand side of the screen, everybody. 2v2 goes to SK Gaming. But then Team Liquid wins the 1v1, and now here you are in King of the Hill, and Canario, who's been so good in King of the Hill, is one win away, and you have to reverse sweep to to keep Tink 10 SK to the final. You have nothing to, to lose, I mean, nothing to nothing to fall back on here, and you come out Golem against this E-Golem deck. So first of all, talk to me about the matchup as soon as you recognized what was happening between you and Canario. Mm, honestly, I choose yeah, I choose um, Golden there because I didn't really feel that comfortable on stage, to be honest. I was like, I don't want to want to go like for a cycle deck that early. So I was like, okay, playing something really safe. I don't need to do that many decisions. And I was also like practicing Golden a lot because I felt like it was really good in the matter. After seeing the match, I was really surprised because I expected a ton of decks from Canario. But I never expect e Golem, especially this variation. So I wasn't like honestly sure like how should I win this? How do I play this? Um, I went like really early Golem because he just like played a bomb tower for no reason. So I felt like, okay, this might be a really good opportunity. But like his defense was really, really good. And of course, it was like, there was a different e Golem time. e Golem was like, out oh, was pretty broken at the time. Yeah. It's not like, also the deck right now, you just play like with Rage, like pretty no skill. But this is like an e Golem, I would say like really similar to a Golem deck. It was like more like control deck. And I like I take a ton of damage there from the blobs. Yeah, and I can see you can see on your face there that you seem mm -hmm. a little bit uh, out of sorts, a little bit unhappy. And then you go golem yeah. opposite lane. And my thought when I watched this was that you went golem opposite lane to prevent giving free magic archer damage to finish that tower on the left. Is that yeah. was that the main reasoning? The main reasoning, I still, I think I could have defended that a bit better on left hand side, but I was like, I'm just committing tubes, which I need behind my golem. So I was just like taking this damage and just build a push. And I think his earthquake was a bit of a mistake because he wasn't even at 10 and like earthquaking early my left hand side, of course, to kind of get the damage done. But I was like, this is like my final push, right? This is my last chance. I got kind of a bit lucky that I had my baby drink survives with one HP, my knight, which also mm -hmm. has to come in another bomb tower. And I was like, I wasn't 100% sure if I get the tower there. So I just played another golem. Um, I mean, yeah, Lightning would have done the same, but it's fine. So it's like a 1-1 one -one situation. But it, like, to be fair, it was like a matchup. I wasn't sure how to play it. I was just like playing it and prayed that I'm going to win it because I have never played this matchup before. <laughs> yeah, I mean, how long into it? So now, you know, you, you, you get that tower down. He's going to have to spend the Earthquake on the left-hand side and go even further down on Elixir to stay yeah. in this one. Were yes. you pretty confident this stage, or were you worried about what we end up seeing him doing, which is the e golem spam that's about to come through the middle of uh, in that in that center spot right in front of your king tower? To be fair, I was like pretty confident because I knew I like the baby dragon. I got like the ice wizard, the cage, and he doesn't have like a fireball or lightning, right? So mm. he, like if if I'm able to spam my troops and get like a really good defense, I might just go in the pocket and win somehow. But like his magic archers were so annoying, and he could just go skull in the pocket. So I was like, I had to defend. Like, the Magic Archer on the left-hand side is also putting me some trouble. I think it's even going to add some tower. Yeah. So, like, this situation isn't really that great. But now I'm just going to Golem in the same line because I know I can't really go opposite because he just might, like, base race me. But, like, my plan with this Golem was kind of just, like, bait out a ton of Elixir and maybe, like, get some damage. And then afterwards, maybe get another Golem down. But, yeah, that was a really good Lightning also. How much are you processing? Like, how much are you really processing and planning 
in moments like this, like staying present? And how much are you just mm-hmm. reflexively playing? Because, you know, I'm hearing you talk about this thought process, but for so many yeah. players, this is just like they're just doing and you're talking about steps and planning. Is that like processing really happening while you're live in game on stage like this? I think so, yeah, especially like with this decks like Golem. I mean, like with minor wall breaker and like some cheaper decks, it's pretty hard to always plan like every single play because the deck is so quick, especially triple X time, you just kind of somehow just need to do whatever you think is working the best. But with like with Golem decks and so on, they're like more strategic in a way where you're like kind of feeling, okay, he most likely has to do this. So I'm kind of trying to do this around. And yeah, this defense was really, 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 really important. Yeah, I mean, this was this was huge because so you play the, the cage on top and you get back to the second yeah. cage here to pull back to the middle. Because I remember during, yeah. watching this one and going, oh my gosh, this is absolutely over. That second cage yeah. does just, just enough. And I was really oh. surprised that second Magic Archer, that he, there wasn't able to be enough of a connection and you hold on beautifully. Yeah. And wow, it was just, uh, it was just again, a totally gorgeous game. After you won this one, obviously you still had Igor, who was 5-0 and on the day so far coming in. And then, of course, Surgical Goblin after that. How confident, or how confident, like, what were you feeling at this stage? Did you feel confident going into Game 2 with Game 3 in front of you? Or was it the same level? Did that win against Canario give you more of a sense of comfort as you were going forward? To be fair, I felt really confident. I think I played like so many one wrong games this season, also in the seeding and so on. I think I just like lost like one game the whole season. It was like against Michifu like earlier. Besides that, I won every single one one game against and a search was pretty close at the end. But yeah, I felt like really good because also against Igor, I, like he played like his, I think he played like I don't know what he played. I think like really cheap minor deck with yeah. Hunter and so on. I played like a giant cycle deck like to kind of snipe his mortar. So that was a deck I felt really comfortable with. So like at this point, I, f- I was like pretty sure that i'm able to get like the reverse sweep but i knew it would be tough but like i was yeah. i was like believing i think the first game is always the most important one because i also knew like they wanted to finish me as fast as they can because they knew i would be capable of like getting the reverse sweep yeah i mean that's the big one is they're definitely scared of you so uh and you you, you i mean we all know you got about as close to a reverse sweep as seemingly possible <laughs> um and it's it's legendary stuff uh, and then, you know, I, I was interested. We, you and I talked about this a little bit. You, uh, there was a game that I thought you were going to include on this one, which was mm-hmm. the, the Moogie Logbait game at Worlds in 2022, which I think many people would say is one of your overall best games, just in terms of the pure performance of it. Um, but you picked one that I was kind of surprised about that uh, is also one of those ones that you continue to give us wonderful moments at World Finals. So let's go ahead and jump into it. And that's from World Finals this year, 2023. You versus Samuel Basoto in what was probably one of the most exciting... No, I'll say this. The most exciting moment of the 2023 Worlds. So, I mean, this was... The, you, you come out... First of all, I'm going to razz you a bit. Coming out... I know you had to. You had to, you had to use it, but you, you play MK... <laughs> MK Giant Goblin Giant here. Yeah. Um, you know, I I I get it. Look, I mean this video is interesting, right? We have you playing my, we have you playing playing minor wallbreakers, dark goblin, cool. Then we have you playing Golem and we have you playing MK Goblin Giant of all yeah. the choices. But um talk to me a bit about the the starting point here when you realize, hey, you're you're playing the nuke against Samuel going uh f- like fairly quick cycle as he's used to. So, like, actually, like, that was, like, this meta was interesting, right? Like, Golden Giant Mega Knight was so, so good. Um, like, I wasn't sure how the matchup exactly would have been, because on paper, of course, I got really good answers. I got, like, the Goblin Giant, um, like, to pressure him, like, with the Rage to get. I got the Mega Knight, I got the Fireball also in defense, but I knew also that, like, Samuel is not that bad with Cycle Dex. Yeah. And also, like, Archer's are really annoying since I don't have the arrows. I have the fireball, Ooh. which of course better against piggies, but I don't have them. And they're also new, which you're also gonna see in a few seconds or minutes, better to say, is that like if he gets a king to activation, I'm gonna be in trouble, especially like with his evolution archers, which were like pretty broken in the days. Um and here I thought like okay, this is a really good situation for me, right? He just committed into a fisherman his Royal Hawks. And now you guys are gonna see me, yeah, like I was like oh, one yeah. second too early. That would have been that would have been over. Now the situation is pretty bad. Yeah, I mean that was the the prediction <laughs> on the rage trying to get yeah. the skeleton. I mean, 
again, those those microseconds. Obviously, but this video is here because you still end up winning this video. But those microseconds yeah. that change everything. Do you think that was just mm -hmm. like a luck of the draw? Were you early? What did? Were you too early, or was he too late, or like what? How do you really evaluate that that um, error there? I'm pretty sure that he knew that I would try that, so I think he tried to do as late as he can because he was expecting me to do it early. I should have to, I should have done it a bit later. If he was, I think he was like really scared about me doing that. Yeah. So yeah, I think he was waiting as long as he can. So, but really well played. So I'm just kind of trying to build up a huge push there with Mega Knight because the good thing is about my deck. Sometimes you just taking towers for no reason because it was so broken at this point you just like overwhelm people randomly so that was like i'm gonna go for like building up in mega knight goblin giant push on both sides sure yeah and we see you play the goblin knight in front of king tower here yeah. you fireball on to the archers and yeah. this is obviously a big part of what this evo archers i mean archers pigs deck yeah. does right you were the, the demands fireballs and then the the hogs the royal hogs come down behind that so here we go we're getting into sudden death in a moment. You're behind, but you've got dual lane pressure. How are you feeling about your position at this stage as you're going into sudden death overtime? Mm, honestly, I wasn't feeling that well because I knew he was he's most likely not gonna go even for his hoggies anymore. He will just like continue the earthquake cycle, is exactly what he does. And I knew if he's like gonna play perfect defense, stacks up his Teslas, getting like a, a evolution archers down, cycling his arches. I'm gonna have a ton of trouble defending this because he will just like EQ psych, he's not gonna give me any like mega value anymore. And he's just like uh, like stacking Teslas. And I can't really do anything. I always need to fireball archers, but the cycle is way cheaper. So it would be really, really hard for me to like break through there. And I knew like he had to do like a mistake, like a really, really big mistake that I'm gonna come back. And here we go. 90 seconds left. You're down by quite a bit. He's just cycling the yeah. earthquakes as you as you mentioned. And so you yes. Goblin Giant into that weak hand side. And I'm assuming that's yeah. just because that's the that's his weaker tower too? Yeah, I know. Yeah, especially that. And also because, like, there's, like, still a chance when I'm playing, like, my troops opposite lane and he just goes piggies into that. It's like, that was a really good piggies timing by him. Yep. Yeah, I mean, that's... It I mean, a really good piggies timing. Yeah, it gets mentioned on the broadcast, too, of it goes, yeah. hey, like, he, he just did exactly <laughs> the thing. He Evo archered, and then you had to yeah. fire a ball, and then he goes piggies in. So... We're down into the final minute. It's triple elixir. You goblin giant. And I can't really show your face here, but it almost feels <laughs> like you're... There you go. There's your face. It feels like you kind of think this is over, but you're doing everything you can for it not to be. I was questioning him if that was the right decision because I was like pretty sure that EQ log wouldn't do enough like tries. So I was like, okay, just spam him. But I actually thought that he's going to get the EQ before I'm finishing him. But he actually did not. So, <laughs> and I took the I took my my face off there just so we could see both you and Samuel, because uh, both of you guys give quite a kind of a look there. So this changes yeah. things, right? Now you're suddenly ahead on damage, both yeah. on the King Tower and on the Princess Tower, and yeah. yeah, you can see Sam goes, "Oh, this is over." You take a big a big breath on that one, yeah, and that's <laughs> GG, well played. Um, so you go from thinking this is completely dead. To a how in the world did both of you how, how did both towers get timed out? I just want to yeah I'm trying to like, get out of the way here and show the the slight uh, am sense of amusement that's clearly on your face in this one. Um, is this the most like it kind of felt like this was the most amused you've ever been on stage during CRL? Yeah, I mean because Sammy and me are also really good friends, so like we also had like some laughs afterwards. Yeah, I was like. I think this are like the best wins when you feel like it's already over, but this is why you should never give up. I know he could have just like played more defensive and just like EQ cycle later on, they would have won, but this is like what happens on stage. People people do mistakes, and this is like what you always have to do, right? Like 99% of the time he would have won this game at home, but this is like what you're trying to do on stage, just keeping up the pressure and eventually you're gonna win. And if not, at least you tried. Like there's nothing you can lose at this point anymore in the game. Yeah, I mean, at this point, you've played on stage, I think, more than anybody who's yeah. done CRL at this point, right? I mean, there. I guess you could... It, it's not impossible that maybe LCOP just might have you by a hair. Um, but, yeah, at this point, do you still get nerves playing in front of the crowds anymore, or is it just completely, yeah, this is old hat, and I, this is what I do? It honestly depends, like, how prepared I am, how do I feel like I'm playing currently at the moment, and how do I enjoy the matter. Um, if I'm, like, really feeling comfortable at all, like, had a good sleep, ate well breakfast, and all the stuff, and had a good, like, like preparation, I've, I don't really feel like nerves a lot anymore. 
Uh, but yeah, also, I just feel like the style of the game is really important. When I see the matchup is good, when I see like I'm playing well, I'm doing the right decisions, I'm keeping under pressure. That helps a lot. Like the first few seconds of the game are really, really important. If you like start off with a misclick, you're not defending really well, you're losing tower early on. This is, of course, not helping. It puts you like kind of in the wrong position. All right. Uh, well, I, I first of all, thank you for coming and doing this. This is so fun to kind of get to think about these games with you and, and hear your mindset and your decision-making process. I know that uh, everyone, the one question probably everyone wants to know, and I'm sure that maybe some of your viewers on your streams have asked you about this a whole bunch, um, but I'm going to frame it a little different way. You are in a very, very exclusive club, having been to five CRL World Finals. The only other person to be to, fa to, to qualify for five finals is LC Op, who only appeared in four because he didn't play in, uh, in CCGS Worlds. So... The, I guess the big question is, are we going to see a sixth? Is there a sixth World Finals appearance in the future for Morton in 2024? I mean, I don't know if it will be there, but I will try at least to be there. <laughs> well, I know that I, along with a lot of people, will be will be rooting for you and hoping to see you uh, at World Finals later this year. Uh, Morton, th seriously, thank you so much. This is great. Any any final thoughts? You know, it's kind of I, I just I don't know how often you do retrospectives of your career. But you yeah. know, I've got I've gotten to watch it since you were a kid to now being mm -hmm. this like seasoned veteran. So it's it kind of special to get to talk about it with you. When you sit back and look at these moments, do you have any kind of big general thoughts on what you've on the career you've experienced so far in Clash Royale? It's amazing because especially like now after like being at home more and just like doing some different stuff and not just like compete all the day, like all the time, like we did like 2019 as like Los Angeles something, you can kind of appreciate it more because back then you ever you had to play, you had to focus, you had to grind 24 seven. You had no really like time to enjoy what you're doing. But mm. right now, like after like watching the games here and there and talk about that, I just like, I kind of appreciate what I did and also the chance Supers I gave to me. So like afterwards, I feel like after a bit of years, you can just say, like, it was a really, really nice time, and I still enjoy what I'm doing. Well, uh, we all enjoy watching you, and all the luck here in the 2024 season. That's it for the video, everybody. Thanks for watching. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, like this video, all that stuff, and I'll see you very soon as Clash Royale 2024 kicks off in just a few weeks. As always, be excellent to each other, and party on, dude. Peace.